Let's jump to this story from Insider. Cardi B is furious about how expensive everything has gotten. How are people surviving? I want to know. That's a good question. Uh, Cardi B is right. And I would say that Cardi B, man, this is this is probably a, a very important barometer for the political temperature in this country. <laughs> when establishment mainstream celebrities who, you know, you mentioned in a previous segment, they're supposed to be with the left. Basically, the left has controlled the narrative. The Democrats do. When they're coming out and being like, nah, everything's bad. And Joe Biden's celebrating on the White House lawn. They've, they're losing control. It's getting it, it's getting so hot out there. It's getting so crazy that regular people are starting to say like, yo, this can't work. I think Democrats should be particularly worried about uh, what happens in November when you get prominent celebrities being like, hey, this sucks. That's why they had, I think, this the rally today is they know that their backs are against the wall. They're in the corner on this. They're trying to gaslight everybody on the subject. But when you are touching Cardi B on, on issues like this and any kind of pop culture icons like that, I think that you, uh, you're you in serious trouble. I agree with you on that. Yeah, regular people, you can't ignore it anymore. Now you're going to get a whole bunch of people who are going to be like, yes, queen. Like, they don't even know. Mm -hmm. They don't even care. All they know is that she came out. You know, we shouted out Flecka's talks. He has these videos where they go and ask people questions on the street. I don't know if you've seen them. Yes, of course. And, and it's just the people are just mind-numbingly dumb. And it's really disheartening. But while it is edited, of course, and, I, you know, I've done men on the street interviews. Most people are not this stupid. What happens is they'll go out, they'll, they'll film a bunch of people and take the stupidest ones and make a video. And it's kind of depressing. But of those dumb people that you see in those videos, they're the kind of people that are gonna hear they're gonna hear Cardi B and go, yeah, it is bad. I'm what I'm gonna vote how she says. I've seen those videos as well where they ask people to ask, you know, who is this president or who is our first president? They can't name them, but they can also name every single name of the Kardashians. Right. So yeah, Cardi B is going to 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 hit the right nerve on something like this. But I, I don't think. How do you fight? How do you not see what is happening right now? I, I I don't think many people pay attention. I think that they're relying on that and they're counting on people to to not be paying attention to what's you know the prices that are happening right now. It's way worse than it is than it's being published because they've changed the barometers for in, to calculate inflation. If you use the same numbers from the late seventies, um, it's which worse is kind of than it's, been it's since way World worse. War than, it was it was and and that was a, just an incredible time to live through the gas lines that happened at that time. The, the 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 prices were shooting up like crazy. Interest rates. We're complaining about interest rates now. Interest rates got to fourteen percent. I think it was above fourteen percent at what, that time. In, like late eighties. Wasn't it like 20? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, we're complaining about it now. We're just getting into this right now. This inflation thing, we're just getting started on it. Find our Germany, baby. Yeah, regarding people not paying attention, is this why, like in the Soviet Union, they went after intelligentsia and they, they tried to take that that strata out is because those were the people that could see the nonsense like they could see the lie they were the dissidents and, and that's why they why the left sees the their arts and music and and uh tv is is so valuable is because it, they are the ones that are pushing that message out there they start to lose little strands like cardi b and that you start to see the wall break down and we're in an, an amazing time like i don't want to put like fear porn out there we live in a time now where where shows like this exist where barriers are being erased that were the, up before. Um, you know, there was 20 years ago, you couldn't create a movie and, and hope to get any distribution because there was no streaming. There was no, the technology wasn't there to, to push that thing out there. We live in a time now where we can actually just create something from our iPhone and put it out there into the world. So we have the tools to fight back on this. But, um, but I think the left has understood from a very, I think there's, there's a whole almost in conservatism, uh, there's a fatal flaw in conservatism, and I consider myself a conservative, that um, they haven't seen this coming for many, mm. many years. They allowed the, this, to be, this to happen. They allowed each one of these institutions to be taken over. I think that there needs to be some kind of a, a reformation uh, movement within the conservative movement to, 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 gra to fully grasp this. And you guys are talking about it all the time. I praise you guys for doing that. Thank you for doing that. It, it, you're surprisingly in the minority. Um, for the in the anti woke world, not a lot of people talk about it. I don't think they feel like it's in their wheelhouse. But when you talk about, or or sometimes the the metaphor fighting back and the culture war comes up, and but the difference is in a real war and in a hot arms war, you actually do fight back. There's like devastation on both sides, and whoever gets destroyed, the other person wins. But in a culture war, the way to win is to maintain positivity and to include essentially everyone. Like you're not shutting things down. As soon as you start becoming the ag aggressor. Th 
the cultists don't want anything to do with you. So you have to stay almost like ignorantly positive. It's very challenging for really intelligent, logical people. Because when, I think, oh, okay, yeah, no, go, no. when you look around and you see things in pain, it's hard to ignore it or pretend like things are still really good. But that's what people want to hear, and that's what the, that's what taps into their feelings. Everybody should play Civilization. You ever play Civilization? No, video I game. Sid, was Sid Meier's Civilization? Yeah, I pronounce it. Uh, they're on, they're on six right now, and there are several ways to win. You know, you you start as a nomadic tribe, you build cities. Eventually, you have borders. Eventually, you, your borders are pressing on other people's borders. Brilliant game. I've been playing it my whole life since Civilization two, and you can win through a cultural victory. If you have cultural dominance over the planet, everybody just wants to be what you are. You win. The other thing that can happen is if your culture is so dominating, it can actually sh push the borders and annex cities and other and other and from other countries. So while it's a video game, understand this idea is, is rooted in real life. When you start getting cultural permeation, when, when American culture starts seeping into, say, the Soviet Union, people then start demanding what other people have. You end up with a Pizza Hut commercial with, was it Gorbachev? And he's like eating the pizza backwards. And then they're like, he brought Pizza Hut. Yay. That's what happens when your culture starts dominating other countries. Your own citizens start saying, we don't like you. We like them. For, for example, when the war with Ukraine broke out, Russian influencers were crying because they were getting banned on Instagram. So these are, these are children of Russian officials with millions of followers being like, no, my life. I want to be American. That's a devastating thing to destroy your country when your own children are begging to be a part of a different country. I was getting the vibe. Uh, with Absolutely. Them. Just really quickly. Culture is key. And I actually did what you described before. I had a picture of Kim Kardashian and George Washington. And I went to the streets of Times Square and I was like, who's who? A lot of people got the Kardashians. Not a lot of people got the presidents. And just one more point, Ian, Bob, before I let you go here. Um, an another thing that I really wanted to bring up specifically around this topic is that I sacrificed my well-being and I listened to this Cardi B rant sorry. on Instagram. <laughs> and and she does talk about how she helps a lot of people and how even helping people is is very difficult for her because more and more people need help now more than ever. She talks about how properties have gone up. She talks about how rents have gone up. And she talks about how do people deal if they don't have a quote, a Cardi B in their life. And she legitimately yeah. asked that question. She made it about her. She also addressed Joe Biden. And she said, you know, everyone's coming at me because I've supported Joe Biden and, and, I, and I, you know, uh, campaigned for him. And she said, this is happening all over the world. This is happening because of the pandemic. And she specifically addressed Biden in this to make sure that she was still okay in the party establishment in the in the kind of sphere. So um, but I, wanna, I, wanna, I, I did it. I wasn't happy I did it, no, no, but no, I should, listened to the rant. No, you should. People should listen. You, should, you don't have to be unhappy. I think it was right of her for, for her to call out all the problems. We got the story from TMZ. She visited her old middle school and donated 100 grand. I oh, think Cardi B is rad. Cool. Mm. I think that's fantastic. I don't like the you know her music, but that's no that's no big deal. And she know, complained you know. years ago about taxes as yeah, well I too. That was, big, <laughs> that was a big deal. You see my money. You got to 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 sweet talk and be like taxation is theft. And then could you imagine? I don't think she, I would sweet talk Cardi B. She comes dog. out. <laughs> she comes out with uh, W A T uh, I uh, T taxation. <laughs> <laughs> wet ass taxation <laughs> yeah exactly and you're I, like oh man somebody red pilled cardi b oh, no, <laughs> you, did you see the clintons talk about that the, no, the uh, oh no you don't want to see it it's, just be it's tit cringe. it'd just be tit taxation yeah, is yeah theft. there you <laughs> go yeah she tit, made that taxation song. Is theft. Yeah. their shirts already made like I'm that sure. years ago that i saw sure. those things never go well though what was the guy St stephen colbert that did the 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 shot one where all the shots oh, were gosh. bouncing around yeah. like when you force those kinds of messages in there but i i do see the, here yeah, but he wasn't self-aware. That's the problem. Like when you went, you know, making a taxation is theft song as a joke because you know it's ridiculous. Yeah. Then it's funny. But Colbert was serious. We can get Cardi B, though. If we can pull her over if she sees an ecosystem that she can survive in and still do what she does. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when she doesn't, when you, when we all the time, we get these little percolations of people popping up, Macy Gray kind of coming out and saying, I know what a woman is, a woman is da 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 da. And then having to, a couple days later, completely backtrack from that because she's afraid. There are so many people in Hollywood that think about certain topics the way that we would think and we would kind of approach but they are afraid because there's a monopolistic uh, industry that they're trying to operate within we can only do so much but this is why we are m making music for one i've made music my whole life so we got carter banks who also makes music 
That's what we can do. If I was a construction guy, I'd start an anti-woke construction company. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was a cartoonist, that's what we'd be doing. Seamus, he does that. We need to create a space where someone can eventually be like, I don't need to work for you because you're woke and insane. That other company is offering an opportunity and I can go work there. So I'm not worried about speaking up. 100%. Yeah, I think that Cardi B is ready because I remember her commenting about how she felt like she hadn't genuinely been herself since she became famous. She said, if you're given the choice between becoming rich or becoming famous, just be rich. Don't be famous. It's terrible. It's stifling. And I was like, oh, it sounds like you're ready for like a change of scenery. Maybe we can make this happen. She's right though, man. Yeah. She's seeing it. She's seeing it. I think she's gotten to a level of success now where she is... is, uh, you know, seeing the world in a different way. And we just need to kind of close the deal with people like that. Yeah, I I often talk about, you know, why don't people do more? There's so many anti-woke people with power and wealth. And they're like, what are they doing? They don't do it that you wish they would do more. And then what you end up seeing is people like Mackenzie Bezos takes billions of dollars from her divorce settlement and then invests it in critical race theory, gender theory, all all this woke stuff. And I'm just like, where, where are the... You know, the anti-woke, the libertarian and the right with massive. I mean, Luke, how many Bitcoin millionaires do you know? And where are they at? What are they doing, huh? Why aren't they making TV shows? Working in McDonald's now uh, Mm. with the dip. Ooh, Uh, holding, I guess. (laughs) Holding a lot of them. Um, I I think a lot of people do get involved, but a lot of people are also afraid to get involved. Um, I I think the culture that we're living in is is one where they try to scare people from not speaking out, not getting involved. And I, I think that's the biggest aspect of control that the system and establishment has on everyone else is this kind of paranoia is this low vibrational fear that keeps them in control and keeps them from being able to fully express themselves and live their truest uh, lives so there, there is a big aspect of it that we need to show people hey it's safe out there everything's fine it's okay you could even confront a politician you could you could you could cuss them out and you can tell them out you can tell tell them exactly how you feel you, you could you could speak your truths and it'll be okay and it'll be fine and the world would be a better place if people would just stop pretending that they're somebody else and that they should be okay and that they should be in the confines of what they think is okay and not i, I think that's the biggest fallacy we're facing there's a real problem with fame like like you were saying who was it that oh was Cardi it Cardi? and yeah. steve martin said the same thing You'd, if you could be rich or famous just take rich don't be famous it's the brave people come in here and they're like tim you're brave like that's what being famous if you don't have the money to have six armed guards surrounding you like a hexagon at all times, like which is insane anyway, no one does. No one really does that. Like, dude, it's it, it, this culture of crowds and mobs that form around someone because they love them or they hate them. Mm-hmm. Mobs can go haywire really fast if there's an explosion or if someone screams or if if a boulder falls down the hill. Like that alone, that's the non-emotion. Like, it's da- it, there is a danger of being famous. I kind of. Yeah, no, I, I finish. Go I for it. That's I, about it. I wanted to say, like, you know, I remember when I was younger and people would say things, the same thing. If you could choose what you're famous, be rich. Mm. I remember I was on a rooftop in uh, in Illinois with a bunch of, like, investors and, like, local politicians for some reason. Don't ask me. I have no idea how I end up there. And they were saying, like, the biggest mistake people make is they think, you know, being fame is a path to something. In reality, it's exposure. It's risk. And I was, I was thinking about that, especially now, because we have, like, just a plethora of stalkers, both love and hate. A plethora, yeah. And, and love and hate, it's both extremely dangerous. Mm. Then you also have, you have different kinds of stalkers. You have the hater stalkers who make things up and are insane and just like think I'm stealing their spoons. There was somebody who tweeted that I went to their house thousands of miles away at two in the morning and turned their TVs on and woke them up. Why'd you and then do that? the other, the other stalkers all believe it oh because they're just genuinely nuts. But then you have the stepping stone stalkers. People who think that they too can be rich and famous if only they could get you to give them the chance or give them money. Mm-hmm. And then you just, it just, it's just, it's, it's, it's an, it's a crazy experience. It's a crazy discovery. And I got to tell you, man, you read these stories about what happens when people win the lottery and how everyone comes out of the woodwork. Oh, bro. It is worse than people, the stories you hear when people talk about the stalkers these celebrities don't tell you the truth about how bad the stalking really is because it would make it worse. But I'll tell you, whatever you think is going on with these celebrities and these stalker stories, it's actually a hundred times worse, substantially worse. Yeah. I wish we could put together like a documentary and just show exactly how bad it is. We've been swatted 13 times, mm. 13. And where's the FBI? No idea. 
There's like, what, what can they really do? And it still just gets crazier. The bigger this show gets, the more successful we are, the crazier things have gotten. Yeah. From, from my experience, is one of the best things you could do is not to give these people any attention because that's no usually what they're after. And that's what they love. They love getting an impact. They love being heard about. They love being talked about. So I dealt with this for a while. It's not convenient, but it's the price we pay. And uh, to add to, to, to your comment, Ian, what you were saying about the groups and going crazy, uh, Frederick uh, Nietzsche had, had a perfect comment about this when he said in individuals insanity is rare but in groups parties and nations it is the rule and i think when he said that he he hit the nail on the head to what's happening right now in the larger microcosm of american politics i think people are suffering i think we're dealing with a, a nutritional health crisis i think we're dealing with a financial crisis i think we're dealing with a cultural crisis i think the crap that they're putting out as entertainment that really is propaganda is just unwatchable in many instances it's disgusting in many instances and i think we're seeing the unraveling of our society and hopefully something new comes from all of this and new people come in with better ideas and don't create a, a great reset as some people would say but but build out of the old something new something better because we need it more than ever they're going to try and push central bank currencies um and they're going to switch us from proof of work to proof of stake for the crypto so instead of having proof of work which is the more processor power you have to make your bitcoins it's going to be proof of stake the more bitcoin you own the more money you're going to make so they're trying to move us to a rich get richer system with proof of stake it's it's very dystopian it's really annoying thanks for checking out this segment from the timcast irl podcast but if you want to check out the full show live tune in monday through friday at 8 p.m and if you want more special access content head over to timcast.com and become a member your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast, and there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., and we'll see you all there.